farm working on a John Deere 2040 tractor. It's got a bad water pump bearing. So you can see by that wiggle right there and we're gonna fix it. That's that water pump, yeah. That's the water pump rattling. side there and then there's one up here and I've forgotten on each side all right well we'll get those out some in the bucket. Uh oh. Okay. We're trying to figure out do we need to remove the radiator here to get the water pump off or not and apparently we do. According to the tech manual we do. So we got to look and see what bolts are involved in uh, removing the radiator. We are currently draining the coolant. Yep. In that bucket there. Looks like it's about out, so we'll get started on removing the radiator. Here's where we're at. We've got uh, hoses off, we've got the belts loose. There's two bolts down here that we've taken out. They come out through the bottom. Uh, it took me a minute to figure that out. And we took the intake tube off and we're going to try to lift the radiator out through the top. We're going to have to kind of shimmy it to the side to get around this hydraulic line, hydraulic return hose here. So we'll give that a shot and see what happens. So here's part of our problem. The alternator will not allow us to get the fan shroud far enough back so that we can get the radiator out. It's hung on the fan shroud down here. So we're going to take that alternator off and that'll give us some more room. We figured out what we had to do was actually remove the thermostat housing over here, which was keeping the fan shroud from coming back. You can see right there is the thermostat housing. Remove that, and we were able to get the shroud out of the way, which allowed us to get the radiator out, so now we can work on these water pump bolts. Well, we got most of the bolts out of the water pump. There are two that uh, are really tough to get to. As a matter of fact, they're behind the engine oil cooler bolts. So unfortunately, we gotta take the engine oil cooler lines loose as well to remove, uh, get them out of the way so we can access the last two bolts, and I'll show you those. Here are the engine oil cooler bolts I was telling you, or not the bolts, but the water pump bolts behind the engine oil cooler. There's one right there, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it. So we got the engine oil cooler lines off. We had to take this bolt out, this whole bracket assembly off right here because the, uh, the bracket for the coolant hose this one right here goes up, right here goes up sandwiches on those. So there's our bolt right there and our other bolt. We'll have to pull this hose off here to get to it, but it's up under there. And we'll do that now. 
Here's the front of the block without the water pump on it. You can see all of that looks pretty good. Uh, it's not rusty or anything, so that's good. And then here's the inside of the water pump right here. Uh, you can see the impeller uh, on this one is actually plastic. I'm kind of surprised to see that. The replacement is a cast iron impeller. So we've got to press all this stuff out and uh, get the new one put on. Overall, it doesn't look too bad. I'm not sure why all that's all gunked up. We'll have to look at it. Uh, but now it's time to press all this stuff apart. First things first, we've got to get the pulley off. We're going to get that pulley off and then get the measurements for how deep the shaft goes into the bearing. And uh, the book has some specifications on the water pump impeller to housing clearance. So we'll get this pulled off first. Man, that's tight. Bigger screwdriver, longer one, give you more leverage. It's just really tight. Let me stand. We got the pulley off and Granddaddy's gonna clean up the water pump here. We'll clean the rest of it off with uh, some parts cleaner. And then maybe spray a quick coat of John Deere Green on it. Day two on a 2040 repair, we got the water pump put back together with the new bearing and impeller. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to film that process. We were uh, getting some help from a local garage here. He was letting us use his press and it uh, It was kind of a rush job. It wouldn't have been good to try to film while we were doing it But I'll show you the details in just a second Here's the water pump with the new impeller on you can see the new impeller is cast iron where the old one was uh, plastic so uh, the specification on this called for by the book is that this impeller should be within plus ten thousandths of this surface excuse me, plus four thousandths of this surface minus ten thousandths. So it can be recessed into the housing ten thousandths or stick and proud of the housing four thousandths. Uh, we decided to go on the, the minus ten thousandths range. So it's recessed just a hair inside the housing. And then the height from this surface to this surface is 5.74 inches. 4.74 so obviously the pulley presses onto this shaft we pressed it down till we got the the proper dimension here and I can't show you this because the pulley's already on but the bearing we actually press the shaft out this direction then we flip the housing over and press the bearing out that direction and then we press the new bearing in this direction and then there's a special seal driver that comes with the bearing kit that we press the seal on from this direction. And then of course you press the pulley on from this direction. So it was a little bit of a process to get it back together. Wish I could have filmed that, but um, it just wouldn't have been appropriate given the fact that we were kind of rushing through the process and, and uh, one of the local garage here in town was letting us use his press. So didn't want to take advantage of that. So now it's time to uh, get it painted up. We got the water pump put back together. We've got it all painted and, and sitting out in the sun and drying so it'll dry quick. And now we're gonna prep this surface here for uh, the gasket and the water pump. And we're just gonna use a drill with an abrasive wheel on it. All right, we got the water pump back on. All the bolts in, the gasket installed. Uh, we're gonna go eat some lunch now and then we'll be good to go. All right, we skipped a few steps here, but uh, we got the radiator, the water pump, fan, fan shroud, alternator back on. And the way we did this, it worked a lot better going back together than it did coming apart, is we, <clears throat> we went ahead and put the fan on, then we put the fan shroud on next and pulled the fan shroud as far back as we could all the way back without this radiator hose on. With the radiator hose off, you're able to get the fan shroud all the way back. And then we were able to put the radiator in from this side and kind of slide it in like that and drop it down into place. At that point, I could put that lower radiator hose on. And uh, yeah, then the fan shroud goes on and the alternator went on next. So here's the alternator installation here. A couple of key items makes it a little difficult is to get this belt guard in uh, 
what we did is put this bottom bolt in first without the belt guard installed. Then came up here, put the belt guard in uh, with the spacer and the nut there, and you can see where the belt guard, it goes between the alternator and the spacer. Then you put the nut on, left that loose, and then we were able to swing this back into place and take the bolt out, swing the guard into place, and then put the bolt back in. So that completes alternator installation. We got the shroud, the upper radiator support, and alternator installed. Now we're gonna install the thermostat housing. We don't have a gasket for this, but this gasket's in pretty good shape, so we cleaned it up, and we're gonna put a little 3M gasket maker on there and uh, cross our fingers. Thermostat housing is in place, and we've also put the coolant bypass hose uh, onto the top of the water pump and just below the thermostat there. Next is the upper radiator hose. Now we're reusing both the upper hose and the coolant bypass hose. The dealer didn't have any one of those in stock, but they had the lower in stock since that's the hardest one to replace. We went ahead and replaced it. It probably didn't need it, but uh, should these go bad, we can just pop the hood off. It's four bolts and then we're good to go. We're wrapping it up here. Next is the intake tube and uh, there'll be a couple little zip ties and routings and stuff we got to take care of. The intake tube's the last major step and then we're going to fill it with coolant and fire it up. Side. It's a whole lot quieter. Back up, got the hood on it. We're gonna put the battery covers and the, uh, the screens on the side, and this project is done. Well, we got it all buttoned up, water pump fixed, new hoses on it, full of antifreeze, and it runs great. Temperature's nice and cool, and there's no noise coming from the water pump. There you have it.